Ta-da! So, <clears throat> we are in John chapter 19, starting in verse 31 today. And, yeah, I was looking all over for my, my Bible Bible. I know I said it somewhere yesterday and can't find it. So I'm back to the, to the giveaway Bible. Which is fine, but I've got a lot of cool notes in John, and I thought it'd been fun to share. But there's a lot of cool stuff. Maybe, oh, maybe we'll get through the end of the chapter today. I don't know. A lot of stuff. We really slowed down here um, in the Gospels. So, therefore, verse 31 of John 19. Because it was the preparation day, that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath... For that Sabbath was a high day. See, there's a big rabbit trail right there. The Jews asked that Pilate, asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. So, we've got some uh, stuff to cover here. Uh, first, let's explain the legs broken. And so the idea was that crucifixion, typically with a crucifixion, the cause of death uh, would be suffocation. That you could stand with your legs. Often uh, you weren't just pinned to the tree, but more so the nails were there to just to keep you on the tree uh, from getting down. Uh, and again, people debate and discuss like it's a huge issue and we have to be real dogmatic and serious about exactly where and how Jesus was nailed. I have heard great cases through the wrist and great cases through the hand, both of which could be true. It's an ambiguous word from what I understand in the Greek where it could mean the wrist, it could mean the hand. One thought on the wrist is that, oh, that'd be stronger. You can put it through the wrist bone and that would suspend his weight more. Through the hand, it's more painful. The hand is full of nerve endings. And so to pull on that nail when it's through your hand would be excruciatingly painful. Some would say that they'd actually tie arms to the tree, because I'll be honest, even through the wrist, I feel like you'd probably rip your hand out pretty quick. Um, but they'd tie the hand up to the tree and the nails were so you didn't tug and pull, that the nails through his hands were mostly just to be excruciatingly painful so you don't tug at the ropes because if you stay still, the nail's kind of bearable, but if you tug, it would hurt. And so your feet, though, would stand on something. You wouldn't be suspended by being pinned to the cross, but typically they believe there was a block or something that you'd stand on. And what would happen is crucifixions, Jesus' crucifixion actually is the shortest crucifixion uh, in historical record. Now, obviously, they didn't normally write down how long everyone lasted on the cross, and this is going off the top of my head, but I want to say like the shortest crucifixion was something like 14 hours. It was over half a day was the shortest crucifixion we have recorded in history aside from Christ. He died on the cross only within a few hours, and much of that was because of the beating he took beforehand and I think, as we discussed yesterday, the Takatsubo myopathy, the broken heart syndrome, being separated from the father, I think he suffered from a heart attack, which is that idea. It's the broken heart syndrome. That, that experience of that separation put an end to his heart, and he gave up the ghost, it says. He gave up his spirit willingly. He didn't have it taken. He laid it down. So, I'm still working on one verse. But the idea is, is he could have stood on this block, his hands pinned, and people would then slowly get weaker. Now, they were low to the ground. We talked about this too. They weren't crucified up at 15 feet, 20 feet in the air. They were crucified down lower where people passing by could look you almost right in the eyes. Just looking up a little bit, you'd see them, their feet only a foot off the ground. But wild animals would come. We read about the, the bird plucking at the eyes of one of the guys next to Jesus on the cross. But we also see like jackals and animals. They'd come and they'd eat at the feet of people. So this is how we know it was low to the ground. So why break the legs? 
because the next day was a Sabbath day, a high Sabbath, which is super significant. And we'll get into that in a second. And so the Jews didn't want someone being crucified on the Sabbath because they can't carry a body on the Sabbath. And it's funny how even with a criminal, they would still want to deal with the body according to the law. And so they needed to hurry up this crucifixion. This wasn't a scheduled crucifixion. This was kind of an impromptu crucifixion. And so they needed to get the thing moving. So what do you do? Well, you break the legs of the guys on the cross. With their legs broken, they can no longer stand. And while they cannot stand, and you guys can't see me if I back up a lot, but your arms are stretched out wide. And if you try and actually grab onto something and then hang, stretch, you'll find your chest muscles get pulled. And it's your chest muscles that expand your rib cage, which then draws air into your lungs. As you expand, the lung muscles are pulled open and wa air, I said water, air <laughs> is drawn in, hopefully not water. And so that's how your lungs work. And so if your arms are stretched and you're hanging with arms stretched, even this, I actually get short of breath because I'm really actually pulling my arms out as hard as I can there. And it's like, yeah, you get short of breath. So they would die of suffocation. So you break the legs that people would die because this was the day before a Sabbath. Not the Sabbath, a Sabbath. See, there's 52 weeks in a year, and there are 52 Friday night at sundown until Saturday night at sundown, 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. weekly Sabbaths. But I want to say there's something, what was it? Oh, 123, or I forget the number. Um, this is where I need my study Bible, where I have all my notes written in there. But there's a lot of other Sabbaths. Maybe it's only in the 70s. I'm having a hard time remembering. But there are many other Sabbaths. Many of the holy days were followed by Sabbath days, days of rest, days where you did no work. So it wasn't just the weekly Sabbath. There were other Sabbaths. Why is this a big deal? Why, Pastor Joe, are you spending so much time on one verse? Well, here's the deal. John's gospel is the only gospel we were given this specific piece of important information. For that Sabbath was a high day. He specifies this was not the Friday night Sabbath coming up that night. It was a high Sabbath. What does that mean? Well, I hate to break it to some of us, but that would mean that Jesus wasn't crucified on a Friday. Now, for a long time, church tradition has been celebrating Good Friday and Monday, Thursday, and all these things. These are traditions that are not only found in the Catholic Church, but they're found in most Protestant churches. Many churches celebrate these things. Now, Good Friday is a beautiful day of celebration and to remember that he was hung on the cross for us. But many people believe, and I would be included in that group, Jesus was more than likely crucified on a Thursday. So here's the deal. Passover falling on a Thursday would actually line up better with Sunday being Palm Sunday, the days from there until the crucifixion. If he was cru crucified, it means you'd have been arrested on in our calendar. So I had to go with our days. Remember, what gets really confusing is that the Jewish calendar and the Jewish week and days starts at 6 p.m. Where we have the day, really it's nighttime, right? And then it's day in the middle, and then it's nighttime. They have a little more... Simple, night then day. Tonight at 6 p.m., what day is today? Today is Wednesday. No, Thursday. Today's Thursday, I think. Yeah, Thursday. <laughs> today at 6 p.m. for a Jewish person on a Jewish calendar begins Friday. Friday starts tonight at 6. That's Friday night. And then Friday night is followed by Friday day. And at 6 p.m. on Friday, it turns into Saturday. So, that might have just been extra information, but I know you guys love this stuff. Here we go. Jesus is arrested on a Wednesday. It's the middle of the night, okay? Through the night, we have this uh, trial going on. Peter, it's cold because it's like midnight. He's warming his hands by the fire. 
They finally get to Pontius Pilate at 6 a.m. It's noon when they get Jesus to the cross. He dies at 3 p.m. So it's 3 p.m. and the Jews know they only have six hours left because this was the Passover day. And you'll understand then, if you go back and read about the Passover in Exodus chapter 12, that's the first commands in Exodus about the Passover, the first Passover there in Egypt. Um, they were supposed to start an eight-day celebration, the, the celebration of unleavened bread. So they have Passover feast, unleavened bread. In the middle is the feast of first fruits. We'll talk about that when we get to the resurrection. But the day immediately following the Passover, it didn't matter if it was a Monday, a Wednesday, a Saturday, or a Friday, it was a Sabbath. So, if he was crucified on a Thursday, 3 p.m., they knew they only had hours left. So they were saying, break the legs. And as we read on, we'll find out. Well, his legs were already broke, or he was already dead. His legs were not broken. That, that's an important fact, too. Um, and so, he would have been buried probably 5 p.m., just hours later, as quick as they could get him, wrap him up and get him in the grave before 6 p.m., before the Sabbath. Oh, I want to read on, but there's, we can do it tomorrow. It's going to be good stuff about uh, Joseph Arimathea and of uh, Nick at Night, Nicodemus Ben-Gurion. Uh, what they do is an amazing, beautiful picture. Get all teary-eyed thinking about it. So we'll get to that. So he's crucified. He's buried. He's in the ground all of Friday, right? Because it's a high holy day. He's in the ground all of Saturday. He can't, um, sorry, yeah, he can't, the women. The women want to go and they want to put more stuff on him. They want to bring him more uh, spices and herbs. They want to anoint his body even more than the 100 pounds that Joseph Arimathea and uh, Nicodemus put on him. But you see, there's nowhere to go shopping. Everything's closed because it's Sabbath, right? So all of the high Sabbath on Friday, everything's closed. But what happened? Well, immediately following that Friday was the weekly Sabbath. So from that Friday night all the way until Saturday night, everything's closed again. Now, if you've been to Israel on Shabbat, the Sabbath, Saturday night at 6 p.m., everything opens up. Right? As soon as sun goes down, you could do some late night shopping. So the women probably ran to the stores and probably bought all the stuff they wanted to put on his body. But by then, it was nighttime. They can't go to the tomb at night. So when do they go to the tomb? Sunday morning, early, right as the sun rises, these women are headed to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. And so that's why I believe in a Thursday crucifixion followed by back-to-back -back Sabbaths, preventing the women from going to the tomb. Sunday morning, boom, they're at the tomb as early as they can. I'm probably gone as long as I can. There's a whole lot of information about one verse, but hey, isn't it kind of cool to know this stuff? To better understand what happened when our Lord was crucified. Tomorrow, uh, super cool stuff. That's all I can say is I wish I had more time. God bless you guys. Have an amazing day. Share this out with your friends who never knew that Jesus wasn't crucified on Friday. He was probably crucified on Thursday. Have a great day.